I'll either tell her Elizabeth and Crips then or uh, Earth Sienna. And just with this big soft brush. And this is just so I don't paint on a white canvas. Keep it really watered down with the turf and the off. No, I've had the same seven colors for uh, 28 years now. Um, I was taught them by a workshop with a wonderful Spanish painter, La Hoya, the Sebastian Cafe, no longer around. He taught me everything about values. Uh, amazing painter. He did portraits for Spanish royalty. Amazing landscape. And I took a class, and the first class you had to take from him at his studio in La Hoya was a whole semester of so we did tons of value studies and color wheels and stills. It was the most boring, tedious <laughs> class, but it really ingrained in me values. And also, I loved his palette. And it's basically a lizard, uh, ultramarine blue, which he used a lot of, uh, a little cerulean blue, which is like a blue-green. Uh, I use that mostly in skies. Uh, I use phthalo green, but I, I recommend like viridian green. It's a blue-green. You know, there's like acid, it can get into everything. Uh, a lizard and crimson, cad red light, burnt sienna, and cad yellow. I mixed a little blue and white into it. And I may adjust it later, but just to remind me that's going to be the meadow there. Okay. Do you have like a little pile of that, like on the side that you mix in, or do you just kind of? I have some of the color of this color. I still have a bunch of it on the palette. So then I'll take some white and blue and mix into a corner of it just to see how it looks. And at this point here, it looks really good. It's drawn well and brushed in. But the end result, I didn't like as much. So I have to be nice uh, about my wife for the dimensions here. My beautiful critique. the value of the shadow. So I can't go too bright yellow or whatever on this. It's got to match the darkness of this. Like the highlight on these will be much lighter and cooler than this highlight. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. I'll, I'll show you as I do. This is always the hardest part of matching values, making sure you got it right. A lot of artists and painters will tend to go too bright and colorful on that. They, it's like your eye will see this yellow or this green and your brain's telling you to mix yellow and green and put it down. That's what color it is, but it's, uh, you really have to step back and think about it and squint to see the color of that and how it's really not that intense. On the palette, it almost looks gray. And then I can always, like I said, if it's not right, I'll adjust it. Best way to check is step way back. Right now, just color notes. I'm going to come back with the brush and clean this up. So I'm not quite as loose of a painter. There are some painters who paint like this, and they do them really well. Oh, I put a little green into that, still red. I like these. Green takes care of the red, so vice versa. This is red. That's good. Keep doing it. It's the same thing there.
leaves now is just a nice highlight. Thing. I was going to say, do you put the highlight in at the end? Yeah. I typically don't work on my printer paintings in the studio because I, I learned early on that I would go in and when, before I had my studio, I had a garage. And we'd be going to bed and I'd say, I just want to look at this painting I worked on. It's a really nice plein air piece. And then um, make an adjustment and then the next thing I know it's two in the morning and I have a really good painting. So, I thought, yeah, I got to learn not to over. Just let it go over. So, yeah, I typically finish it. Thank you.